The Bakhmut and Lyman Kupiansk directions remain a priority in eastern Ukraine. The day before, the enemy had lost 226 soldiers killed and 234 wounded there. Report from the spokesman for the Eastern Group of the Armed Forces of Ukraine Seriai Cherabatii. In the Bakhmut direction, the defending troops continued to take the initiative and suppress the enemy. The enemy fought back, fired 519 rounds at our positions, and made one airstrike. In total, eight battles took place in which 74 colonists were killed, 152 were injured and one was taken prisoner. An enemy tank, six armored personnel carriers, two Gvazdika self-propelled artillery systems, a D-30 howitzer, a counter istanok radar battery and three ammunition depots were also destroyed. Cheravatii said. According to him, the enemy is trying to take the initiative and take offensive actions in the lyman Kupiansk direction. A record 908 times our positions were shelled with all types and calibers of artillery, 11 airstrikes were carried out. So far, 29 battles have taken place in which 76 colonists were killed and 158 injured. Two tanks, a self-propelled artillery system, two mortars, howitzers, two unmanned aerial vehicles and a field depot with ammunition were destroyed, the spokesman said. He noted that in the Bakhmut direction, the defense force is conducting a measured and progressive offensive, using various tactical innovations to advance with minimal personnel losses. Every day we free up hundreds of meters of our land and in time it will become tens of kilometers. This means that this process is measured, stable, but non-stop, the spokesman for the Eastern Group of the Armed Forces of Ukraine assures. In the Tavria direction, the Ukrainian defense forces systematically pushed the enemy out of their positions and moved forward. The commander of the Tavria Operational and Strategic Forces, General Alexander Tarnovsky had this to say on Telegram. The combat work of the defense forces in the Tavria direction continues. Our soldiers systematically pushed the enemy out of their positions. There is progress, says Tarnovsky. According to him, the artillery units of the Ukrainian defense forces in the Tavria direction carried out 1,316 shelling missions over the past day. The enemy's losses in killed and wounded amounted to almost two companies. 24 units of enemy military equipment were destroyed. Tarnovsky informed. In particular, a tank, 16 armored personnel carriers, two 2A-65 Mstabi howitzers, 2S-1 Gvazdika self-propelled artillery system, 2A-36 Jayatsin B-gun, 2S-4 Tyalpan mortar, and vehicles were destroyed. Three enemy ammunition depots were also destroyed. As reported, the Ukrainian Defense Forces eliminated around 240,690 Russian aggressors from February 24, 2022 to today, and another 680 during the last few days. Meanwhile, night vision footage circulating on social media reportedly reveals Ukraine's first recorded use of dual-purpose enhanced conventional munitions, or cluster bombs, in its ongoing war with Russia. The footage shows a group of Russian soldiers being targeted in Krasnohorivka, in eastern Ukraine. The US agreed to supply Ukraine with the weapons earlier this month after months of wrangling, and the Pentagon says they have arrived in the war-torn country. Kiev has repeatedly called for cluster munitions to be banned in more than 120 countries but not in the US, Russia or Ukraine being sent for use by its troops in the ongoing conflict. Pigms are bombs that open in the air and release several small bombs or submunitions over a wide area. They are particularly useful for clearing large numbers of infantry, Siddharth Kaushal, a researcher at the London-based think tank Royal United Services Institute previously said, some have raised concerns that unexploded shells could cause unwanted death, posing a danger to civilians for decades. The US has said it will deliver a version of the weapon that has a reduced idle rate, meaning that fewer unexploded submunitions. The Pentagon confirmed that Ukraine has started using cluster munitions on the battlefield. Pentagon Deputy Press Secretary Sabrina Singh said during a news conference that Ukraine has committed to responsibly using these weapons, to tracking and recording where they are used, so that when this war is over, they can begin mine clearance efforts.
White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby also said Thursday that Ukraine had used US-supplied cluster munitions against Russian forces. We got initial feedback from Ukraine, and they used it quite effectively, Kirby told reporters. They actually had an impact on the Russian defensive formations and Russian defensive maneuvers. U.S. President Joe Biden said during the interview that it was a difficult decision to agree to the controversial arms transfer, but added Ukraine was running out of ammunition. Michael McFaul, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, said ammunition was a necessity for Ukraine, which was weeks into its counteroffensive to retake territory captured by Russia during the war. I have advocated for the U.S. to sign an international treaty banning cluster munitions in the past, McFaul tweeted. In a separate tweet he wrote to those asking questions about the U.S. decision to send cluster munitions to Ukraine, your concerns about war crimes and international law today would have more credibility if you raised the same concerns 499 days earlier about Russia using such weapons against Ukraine. Meanwhile, an advertisement for a benefit concert in Russia this weekend informs potential attendees that the funds raised will go towards body bags for troops fighting in Ukraine, reported an Instagram flyer promoting an event in Blagovyshchensk, in the Amur Oblast in Russia's Far East. The ad on Amur Life's Instagram account is titled to support people in SMO, or Special Military Operations Zones, using the official term for a full-scale invasion of Moscow. Blagovyshchensk residents were invited to a benefit concert in support of SMO participants, read the message superimposed over the image of a soldier. Next to the ad is a post explaining what the money raised at the event will be used for. Among the military's needs are pillows, insect repellent, wet wipes, thermos, clothing and medicines. The funds will also help buy trash bags and body bags, according to Serena, who shared a screenshot of the post. However, the outlet says the post was later edited to exclude these items and the most recent post next to the flyer is simply trying to encourage people to come to the event which will take place between 6 p.m. and 8.45 p.m. Since the start of the war, Russian troops and their families have complained of a lack of basic equipment for those fighting in Ukraine. There are reports of newly mobilized men purchasing everything from thermal underwear to body armor. A month after Vladimir Putin announced the partial mobilization of troops, the Kremlin acknowledged there were problems in providing adequate equipment to hundreds of thousands of people.